Air Raiders, Starcom, Legions of Power, Zero Hour. It seemed like in the 1980s all the big toy companies had some kind of space themed playset, many of them utilising the same scale miniatures and the same format, featuring armies that fit inside big space bases with an array of different vehicles and aircraft. These were mega popular back then and toy companies were churning them out by the truckload. These were the cowboys and Indians wooden forts of the 1980s and kids like me couldn't get enough of them. There was one playset though that for me stood out more than most. They might have had a lifespan of only 4 years but in that short space of time they made a huge impact on many of our childhoods and they were called the Manta Force. were first introduced to the Manta Force in 1987. Created by Bluebird Toys, the same company that would later be responsible for Mighty Max, arguably the most popular line of playsets ever. Like many of the other rival playsets, the Manta Force featured a ton of miniature single colour plastic soldiers that all fit inside huge motherships, ships that looked like they were straight out of a 1980s space shooter. Growing up, I was a kid that loved all this shit. I were obsessed with side scrollers and space shooters on the Amiga 500. So to me, all this wicked cosmic pop culture, it all went together hand in hand and I were all over it. Manta Force, searching the universe for Earth's twin planet. The Manta Wolves, the Manta Sharks, and the Manta Hawks, led by Commander Quest against Major Vex of the Viper Squad. The Manta Force were a team that were made up of Earth's most elite soldiers and scientists. They were ready for anything, but one thing that they were always defenceless against were parents tidying up. Remember when I did the Toys That Your Parents Threw Away episode or the Mighty Max Memories mini documentary and I spoke about how ah, these were the toys that constantly got overed up and thrown away by no bullshit parents on tidying up rampages? Well, Manta Force with their little nondescript single colour plastic bodies definitely suffered more than most. Now even though Manta Force never had an animated series running alongside it like most of the popular toys did at the time, the storyline could still be followed through comic strips in Eagle and 2000 AD. Marvel did a one shot issue and Bluebird also released their own promotional mini comics. What I also really like about the story of Manta Force is that it isn't just a standard tale of good versus evil. In an alternative 2012, humans have developed the technology to colonise other planets in the solar system, Mars, Venus and Saturn being just a few of them. Planet Earth is now an overpopulated bowl of pollution, so to try and help humanity move forward, the world's governments put together the Multiple Air Naval Terrain Assault Force, or the Manta Force, to blast off into space in a newly built mothership to try and find themselves a whole new planet to live on. As the Manta Force head off into the stars, it's not long before others are envious of their mission and the planet that they could potentially discover. And that's when the Viper Squad get involved. You see, the Viper Squad are living on Saturn, a planet with unbreathable air in big plastic oxygen bubbles. So they hijack a ship of their own called Red Venom in the hopes that they can hunt down the Manta Force ship, hijack it and take it over as their own before it arrives at its new home. Now they face Red Venom, the Viper Squad's own attack ship. Nine enemy fighting machines in one. Major Vex's mission, to stop Commander Quest and his Manta Force from finding Earth's twin planet. Now that in itself to me is a wicked little storyline, but it's what happens next that really draws me to the toy line and the reason that I wanted to make this whole video in the first place. See whilst the Viper Squad and Manta Force are out in space duking it out and arguing over who's gonna take New Earth first, they accidentally run into this guy, Mad Carnoid, a big cybernetic brain alien that rolls around in a giant gunship full of killer android henchmen called the Black Barracuda. When this guy's around, anybody can get it. Manta Force, Viper Squad, anyone. And that's why when Mad Carnoid shows up, the Viper Squad and the Manta Force end up having to team up and join forces just to stay alive. Carnoid is a proper space pirate, enemy of the world, with an allegiance to nobody. He's gnarly, he's brutal, and that's fully represented here in this toy counterpart because this thing is fucking awesome. Lined across both sides of Carnoid's ship are his robot goon squad, each with interchangeable arms and tank tracks. The inside of the ship features a whole robot building workshop and repair bay full of spare parts and the nose of the ship is loaded with big red space projectile torpedoes that can all be fired separately for that full bedroom battle experience. 
The robots, like all Manta Force figures, are little single plastic poles with no paint jobs. They must have been really nice and cheap to produce, and that's why Bluebird stuck so many inside the playsets when they made them. They're also tanks in comparison to the size of the humans, and look like they'd have no problem at all pulling their arms and their heads off in a stand-up fight with any of them. It's this part of the toy that really does it for me though. Inside the top part of the ship houses Carnoid's vehicle, a red transparent skull with a mouth that opens to reveal the big man himself. I love that it almost looks like a skull with a spine attached, with all these little green tentacles looking like nerves and tendons that can wrap up and trap humans inside them. Carnoid himself is a wicked looking mechanical brain skull. He's massive compared to any of the humans, a big organic mind horse that controls an army of mechanical death machines. I love this guy, and as much as I like this toy line as a whole, this is definitely a standout piece for me. Now as much as I dig the Black Barracuda, there's one other ship in the Manta Force line that really takes the top spot for me, and it's one that in my opinion is one of the coolest toy spaceships ever, and it's this thing, the Bog Rocket. There's this certain type of sci-fi themed aesthetic that I love, and it's when we're introduced to the notion that there's an alien race that creates all of its tech via bioengineering as opposed to earthbound technology. Ships and weapons and suits of armour that are grown and made from fungus spores and meat and organs and all things that are organic. So many of those old space shooters that I mentioned had levels that felt like they took place inside an alien hive planet, with enemies that were grown inside its walls and cavities, and it's always been a look and an idea that I thought were fucking awesome. So when you see the bog rocket emerging from a swamp, looking like some giant fucking floating stomach, covered in little creatures and parasites, and imagining it being surrounded by this toxic gas cloud of sulphur and death, you can understand why I dig it so much. On the outside we've got these mushroom looking cannons that fire green neon projectiles and then we've also got these weird red stink bombs that can be dropped down on enemies below. Also, whereas the Black Barracuda has all of its troops lined up on the outside of it, this thing leaves everything to the imagination with all of the creatures that pilot it being hidden deep inside. The front of the bog rocket then breaks away to reveal this smaller attack ship. I love the shape of this thing and the transparent green outer shell that gives us a vague glimpse of the mutant pilot inside it. This guy, Stinkhorn, leader of the Stenchoids, enemy of both Manta Force and Viper Squad, a tentacle-legged octopus alien that could almost look like some sort of Dalek. Now as a kid, I just found this randomly at a car boot, just this one little ship. I had no idea that it belonged to Manta Force or anything like that, I just thought it was awesome and I used to take it with me flying around everywhere. If only I knew then what I knew now and that this one Manta Force and belonged to a bigger mothership, I would have been fucking buzzing. So taking a look inside the ship, we can see that this is not like any other Manta Force playset that came before it. It's not full of smaller vehicles, it stands upright, and it only features four enemies inside, but each one is completely unique. We've got this guy that's like a red elephant monster, some two-headed vampire looking guy, this dude looks like a barracuda, and then we've got this dude that's some kind of hammerhead squid. None of these would look out of place in Star Wars, chopping it up in the Mos Eisley Cantina, and I think they're fucking dope. There's also this trapdoor mechanism where you can capture vipers and manta force inside, but the coolest thing about this playset has to be these. Check this shit. This playset actually comes with the rotting corpses of humans that have died inside it. I think this might be the only kids playset ever that comes with legit dead bodies as toys, not zombies or skeletons or Mighty Max dead victims that were sculpted into the playset as part of the background, actual real half decomposed dead bodies, corpses that you can legit play with. You could also get these separate Manta Force figure packs, like this one, featuring another mutant enemy and another rotting carved up dead body. There's also this one that shows up in sets, and I don't have it, and I'm sure this wasn't the intention, but tell me that guy's body ain't bent up to look like a fucking swastika. <laughs> The Stinkhorn also comes with a couple of these red eggs. One houses the dead bodies and the other one contains this stuff. Now that's supposed to be like Play-Doh, but this thing came out in the early 90s. Shit's over 30 years old, so by now it's just a solid green rock. Luckily, there's a Smith's toy store about 20 minutes from my house. So me and my friend Judd went on a little mission to find some Play-Doh so we could test out the Stinkhorn's most fun feature. 
I want some toxic green, Judd. Pick me a good green. So we got the play door. Now we can go home and play with the Manta Force. We went for green and purple respectively. So the stink horn has these syringe-like mechanisms either side of it. And what you do is roll up a little sausage shape like that, stick it in that pipe there, put the plunger in and squeeze it down. And then check what happens. It makes these long toxic Play-Doh tentacles that consume and suffocate the little human people underneath them. Ah! Also, any excuse to get Play-Doh out, I'm always fully strapped in for it because it smells fucking bad boy. I want some aftershave that smells like that. Play-Doh, get on it. Get on it, aftershave people. Yeah. The Play-Doh fun doesn't stop there either. Check it, Stinkhorn's got a Play-Doh snot nose feature. The maddest ones are these though. If that swastika dead body wasn't messed up enough, look how fucking suspect these are. Some kind of bubonic looking penis cannon. And it gets even better. Check it, roll up a little bit of Play-Doh, put it in the back of the arm and squeeze. It plunges out the end like some grim STI gangrene looking dick puss. I always say the 80s villains are the worst of the worst. This red elephant guy's gotta be up there with the baddest of them. Catch him rolling up on Manta Force spacemen and just hosing them down with putrid dick juice while they're laid out on the floor fucking dying. The Stinkhorn Bog Rocket ended up being the final playset released in the Manta Force line. All the mutants and spaghetti Play-Doh syringe technology in the world couldn't save the line from not getting cancelled. Kids like they do in most things got bored of them and Bluebird moved on to concentrate on other releases. Manta Force are rarely a toy line that get brought up when people talk about the most popular toys of the 80s. They came, they went, and for the most part, they were pretty much forgotten about. But to me, they were a line that were always unique and special, and I always love seeing them turn up when I'm on toy hunting missions. The Manta Force are a toy line that have been around for as long as I have. And call me a weirdo, but I like to think that 30 years ago, these little dudes were created, thousands of kids put them in spaceships, and they've been travelling around on their own little missions ever since, looking for that perfect paradise planet. Some are still floating around, around car boots, flea markets, toy fairs and thrift stores. Some of them never made it. But the lucky ones did eventually find that perfect place to call home. A place where they can always be safe. Their own new earth. AKA the collections of people like us that love and appreciate them. They might not be the most popular toy line, but to me that just makes them more cool. I have awesome memories growing up playing with these things, so I'll always love them. And as long as I'm around, and as long as I'm a toy collector, which I always will be, I will always have a space in my collection for some Manta Force. If you enjoyed this video today, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel. I'm also over on Instagram at Theo underscore Kane underscore Slimehouse. I like to cover anything and everything cool, artistic, retro and edgy. And there's a ton of exclusive content over on there. Also, if you want to help make Slimehouse bigger and better than ever, you can also consider subscribing to our Patreon. In the meantime, I'm Theo Kane. This is all figured out. And thank you for watching Slimehouse TV.